Being able to scaffold technology is really important for our students because we assume that many of our learners who come into our classrooms understand how to use technology and that's just not the case usually. So even if it's a tool that they haven't used before, they need a little bit of support. And whether it's just directions that kind of lays out what your expectations are, how you encourage them to use the tool, or what you're hoping their end product looks like, that can be very helpful for them in their learning process of learning a new t tool for technology. The other piece to that of why it's really important is that we want our students to see how we expect them to use the tool. So if we say use this particular tool to create this particular item, we might get 50 different versions of what we're looking for. And some may be what we were hoping and some may not be. So being clear about those expectations and building our students up to be successful using the technology that we're asking them to is really crucial. All the skills that they might need for the course, we want to give them plenty of time to practice early on and uh, scaffold the activity so that they have plenty of time to practice um, and, and little steps building up to the larger activity that they might use that for. The technology within that particular course has to be accessible and easy enough for a huge demographic that they're dealing with and making sure that they don't have to deal with it in the sense of a support aspect of it. So if there are issues, certain ones, certain types of technology, because we only support the learning management system, but if there's a variety of different tools that they're focusing in on, um, they need, the faculty themselves need to have a pretty good handle on, on it and or know, know how to direct to someone that can help that particular student if they do have issues, especially if it's a technology issue where you have to have you have to download the application within to your, your site. Those are the types of ones that are a little bit more difficult than if it was just a web-based type of application where you, you can submit, you know, it's basically if it's a learning management uh, system, if you're submitting an assignment, something really simple to that effect, that's more or less what you want to at least address in the beginning. And then as the courses are moving, you know, a little bit more into the course and stuff subtly, make sure that they, you know, that you're making them a little bit better technology as you want, want them to go. I've done it a couple different ways in different courses. We have some courses on our campus that use video. So they ask their students to create videos that are basically tutorials. And the really cool thing is some of our students have chosen to create tutorials about using the technology that they're using. So those can be reincorporated into future courses. And it's basically students teaching students from semester to semester, which build that community and help students see that their work is important enough to the instructor that it might be in a future class. So that's one way that kind of helping our students to scaffold each other in that way. So the first time that you do this in a course, you will want to have some directions for students to follow, whether it's directions from an instructional designer or the faculty member that actually created the instruction. These should be very clear and give broad strokes of this is how you log in. These are the tools that are available to you and this is how I can see you using them in the course. So they can be relatively simple but enough that students can get started with it. And then once they start to ask questions, that's when it's great to bring in a discussion board or something where it can become a collaborative learning experience for the students and the faculty member. We're doing course reviews right now using the OSCAR rubric and uh, some of the things we're finding is where an instructor might have nothing but quizzes throughout the semester and let's say an economics class and they have a huge final research paper. So one of the things we're asking them to do is like s scaffold that research paper so that they have some experience uh, writing on the topics that are talked about in the class, throughout the class, in little, in little steps, maybe discussion forums, maybe reflective posts, maybe short um, essays, so that the final research paper is not the first time they're experienced, they have experience writing something long in that topic. So potential pitfalls with technology, there's always a chance that it won't work. So <laughs> have a plan B, but Really, I mean, technology is one of those things that's great. You can push a deadline back 24 hours and give students extra time to do it. It can be something where creativity really is fostered and students put forth these super creative projects that we weren't even expecting. 
sometimes our students get lost in the technology and it's a good kind of lost. It's that finding a passion and creating something based on the content of our course that they were never excited about before. So there's pitfalls and, and there's potential and they're really kind of one and the same sometimes with technology. Thank you.